Hi there, this is Gary Fong, and today I'm going to show you uh, a real game changer in photography. Now, I know it seemed like for a really long time the uh, professional photography level of cameras has gotten really boring. I mean, it's, it's like there have been no real new breakthroughs. Like, they might have increased resolution, or they might have increased uh, shutter speed or processing, but there hasn't been anything really new uh, since probably the uh, the last decade or, or maybe the last, say, uh, 15 years that have really changed how photography is. And uh, right now I'm happy to say that there's uh, something new that's completely different. It solves a lot of problems that professional photographers have. And this is the Sony mirrorless systems. Now this is the uh, A7R. They come in A7 and A7R. And this one right here is the Alpha 6000. So uh, I'll just go over some of the features and why this one is uh, revolutionary and brown groundbreaking. Okay, so first of all, you have to kind of get used to the size. Now I actually have a vertical grip on here so and this is a big bigger Zeiss lens on it so it does look maybe just a, a little bit bigger but look at the difference between this and my regular camera which is the a99 so there's quite a difference in the size between these two and the handling now this one has actually got some features that are uh, more groundbreaking than this and I'll just go through them really quick. So the first thing it has is a 36 megapixel sensor. Now this is the largest full frame sensor there is out there. Any larger than that now you're going to have to get into medium format digital photography. And so it's often compared to the Nikon D800 which has the also a very very large sensor. It also has no mirrors so basically what you're looking at is an electronic viewfinder and that has a lot of advantages. A ton of advantages over optical as I'll show you in just a second. The other really groundbreaking thing is that it has access to Wi-Fi and you can download applications on it just like you would with say your Droid or your Apple uh, iPhone. There actually is a Sony kind of a marketplace where you can choose different applications specifically for this camera and it you can basically load them while you're in the camera and one of the really cool things I like is direct connection to Facebook or Flickr. I've said for quite a while, I wrote an article in uh, PD and talking about the future of SLR and I said the the people who enable the direct connection to Facebook or Twitter or uh, any of those or even your iPhone which this will connect directly with your iPhone uh, would basically have the revolutionary break because I don't understand why you can take your iPhone and and we're all used to this and just instantly upload a photo to Facebook or Twitter or Instagram but you can't do it on an SLR on an SLR what you have to do is you have to go and you have to take the card, stick it in your computer, upload it to your software, and then share it. And a lot of people don't even know, you know how that works anymore because we're so used to the uh, phone. This one's got a really uh, very, very simple wireless connection. So I can take a picture, hit a couple buttons, and then access the internet and upload directly to Facebook, which I think is really cool. The other thing is really kind of interesting is that it'll charge by USB cord. Now, this is really a cool, weird thing to think. You can actually charge your uh, camera with USB cord, but just like you would charge your cell phone, you stick this onto one of the new uh, U mini USB uh, cords, and you've got yourself a charged battery by the next day. Another thing that the A7R has is no anti-aliasing filter, and this basically is something that was present only on the Foveon, or I believe it was the Sigma cameras that had the ability to shoot without an anti-aliasing filter, these raw images, but unfortunately they were very, very large and very slow to upload and required their own software. This one has no uh, no aliasing filter plus 36 megapixels, so it becomes a beast of an image capture. In fact, this one, as far as image capture, would top the top of the line Sony A9. This little guy here is very interesting. This is the Sony Alpha 6000, and it's currently my total favorite. I I can't even tell you how much fun I've been having with this camera, even though it may not look like it's a professional camera as a professional photographer, I can't really see why you wouldn't be able to use this. I mean, after all, it's got a hot shoe for shooting flash. It has the ability to fit all of the larger Sony lenses with this cool little adapter. And if you are currently in the Nikon or Sony systems, you simply need to get uh, what's called a Metabones adapter and you can stick any of your 
uh, system lenses on it and shoot with this tiny camera. I mean, it almost looks like a lens cap for the back of this thing, right? But this is a camera that I really am super excited about. Now, let me tell you why this one's actually kind of the ultimate camera for shooting action shots or, uh, I, I mean, I shoot a lot of shoot a lot of photos of my children. I think this one is the perfect one uh, for shooting action or uh, photojournalism or anything indoors. Uh, and a lot of photographers used to use cameras this size, uh, th what they call the viewfinder, uh, I'm sorry, the rangefinder size, like the old Leicas. And a lot of the photographers actually really like, the famous photographers like the look and feel of these little things and the ability to pick them up and shoot. I really like how small this is because, let me show you how tiny it is. It's basically just I mean, it's really small, so, but it will be able to hold all of the different lenses. It'll hold the E-series lenses, and it will hold uh, the regular uh, full alpha lenses, plus with adapters you can fit Nikon or Canon uh, other lenses. So let me tell you some exclusive features of the Sony mirrorless systems. Now, this one's full frame, this one's APS, but they both have tracking very, very accurate tracking across the frame. Now, all the Sonys do this. Now, the reason why they're able to do that is just like your iPhone. Your iPhone, as you notice, when you're about to take a picture, there's a little square that kind of goes around the person's head. Same thing happens with the Sony cameras. The Sony A9, the A7, A77, all have tracking focus and it's really cool because you don't have to crop and refocus like a regular camera. So let me tell you what the struggle is for the typical Canon and Nikon shooter. If you're shooting in a backlight situation for example you have to override the exposure by telling the camera either to put it on spot metering so that you would focus directly on the subject or you would basically have to use exposure override and open up the exposure so that your subject would be in focus. Then on top of that you have to move your focus point to the eyeball of the subject that you're shooting if it happens to be a person. So that means you're doing two things at once. You're basically taking your camera and you're overriding the exposure or changing the exposure mode to spot or whatever and then you have to focus and recrop or select the focus point. What this thing does is it's got this really cool feature that's called eye autofocus and this is something that you can program as one of the buttons. And when I press that and I'm taking a portrait of of, say one of my kids it will basically light up just the eyeball which I think is a pretty amazing thing and then it will fire the other thing it does is this one has 197 different phase detection autofocus points which basically covers 97 percent of the screen that even beats the a7 a7r because the a7r basically has well the a7r only has contrast detection uh, contrast autofocus which is kind of a limitation compared to the A7 which has phase detection. All the other alphas that I've ever known have the superior phase detection autofocus. But this one has phase, phase detection autofocus across the entire screen, 97% of the screen. So if your subject moves from left to right or whatever, it's going to track that subject. So imagine that you can now focus and expose for the eyeball and the face or track a certain individual that you want to track across the frame. It also shoots a really crazy 12 frames per second and in this sequence you can see basically that uh, my boy has dropped a toy and it basically caught the toy on the way down and on the rebound. So one of the really fun things to do with this thing is and in my uh, premium channel I'm going to basically show you con menu by menu. There's a hundred and 80 something odd menu choices and 25 different uh, tables to choose from when you're doing the setup. Uh, in my premium channel I'm basically going to take all of these different cameras and show you exactly how to work them to get the best results without having to figure out what all the other functions mean. I'll ba basically get you to shooting uh, very very fast. So. What's really fun with this one is to put the camera on aperture priority and then put the camera on, you know, the different settings that I'm going to suggest to you. And then when you're shooting with, say, a lens like this one, which is a 1.4 50 millimeter lens, do the eye autofocus and grab the eyeball and then shoot. Or if you have uh, your subject kind of moving across the frame, it will track that subject and focus and expose for that subject. Now in a situation where like this, where you have just a ton of backlight and you're uh, 
and, and you've got your subject off to the side, in a Canon or a Nikon with an optical viewfinder, I would have to lock on that subject, hope that person doesn't move forward or back, and then uh, I would have to change the metering. So I'd have to either override the metering for backlight situations or whatever. On this one, it does it on the fly, 12 frames per second. This is what 12 frames per second sounds like. And it's pretty amazing. So. At 800 bucks, this is really hard to beat, and that's including the, the chintzy little uh, 18 to 55 uh, 3556 lens or something like that. But what's cool about this is that you can put on with this uh, adapter any of the Sony Alpha lenses. I happen to be using a Sigma right now, but Sony also makes Zeiss lenses, which is from my old days with a Hasselblad T Stars. Uh, it has that same kind of uh, Vario sonar and the red dot and everything like that. So, very very high quality glass. They have Zeiss, uh, but I really like the Sigma lenses also, so I use the Sigmas. And uh, what I like about the Sigmas is they have faster speeds. They've got a lot more lens variety than you would find with the Zeisses. Uh, Zeiss has very limited lens quantity. So, one last thing I want to explain is that on the A6000 or the A7R, you can only use that I autofocus function when you're using the E-series lens specifically for these cameras. You can't use the adapter and, uh, and another lens and have the I autofocus work. So that, that is the only limitation. Now, some of you may not really ever use I autofocus, but if you're shooting with a very, very high speed lens, like an F1.4 shot wide open, those of you who are, uh, you know, photographers that like to blur out the background, have a beautiful bokeh, you understand the frustration of trying to find that eyeball, focus on it, recrop, or move the joystick until it's on the eyeball, and then hope the person doesn't move. With this, you basically have the I autofocus function, which is really cool. The other thing that uh, I want to just point out out, and I'm sure Sony will fix it, but it, this will save you a lot of frustration, is the direct link to Facebook will not work unless you turn off notifications uh, on your Facebook security features, because if it w is looking for a browser that it's never seen before, it'll ask you for approval, and it'll throw this guy into a little bit of a confusion. So that's basically it for now, and uh, just uh, check these guys out. I have been shooting this thing all weekend, and I I just absolutely think it's the most awesome thing. All right, so thank you. And uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And also, when the premium channel comes out, the subscribers will get an announcement and we'll take all of these cameras and show you menu by menu what are the best selections to pick for the best high-performance photography for whatever you're doing. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.